When Mechs vs Kaiju released on the Switch a few weeks back, it certainly caught my attention, being a huge fan of Kaiju in particular. It's a tower defense game where you play as a squadron of mechs trying to take down a number of monsters attacking the city, and today we're going to have a full review of it to see if it's potentially a hidden gem that we've missed. Is it mechtacular, or should you kick it out of Ghidorah? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now let's find out. So in terms of story then, as I mentioned, you play as the leader of a mech squadron whose mission is to take on a number of kaiju attacking the city. You start with your one mech and two assistant mechs, which are initially placed on the left hand side of the screen, but there are other characters and mechs of course that you can recruit as you go further into the game. There is a main storyline that goes through in terms of missions that you play, and also a side storyline with these missions being unlocked as you complete the previous one. So in terms of gameplay then, this is first and foremost a tower defense game. As I just said, you have your characters on the left hand side of the screen to begin with and the creatures will attack you from the right. You can pull up your defensive menu by pressing the ZL button and this will show you the squares available on the screen for you to place items or units to battle the Kaiju. If I were to compare this to another game, it's most similar in my opinion to something like the original Plants vs Zombies although it does have some differences in terms of how it works. For example, the Kaiju will never attack your weapons, they will only try to break down the walls. This means whereas generally in games such as this you would have the wall first, holding up the monster so that you can get some hits in with your weapons, here it's quite okay to have the weapon on the outside of the wall as the Kaiju will walk past it, stop at the wall and obviously take damage. For each mission you partake in you will gain two types of currency, you will get research points and you will get gold. Looking at the research points first, you can put these into the research pilots which you can access from the main screen and this is basically a skill tree where you can upgrade your weapons, unlock new weapons or traps, but also recruit those other mechs that I mentioned earlier. You can also increase things like the amount of gold or research points you get per mission, making it easier to then unlock these upgrades. The gold goes into upgrading your mechs, both your one and your supporting characters. This could mean the range that they can fire at is increased or changing the types of shots that they are capable of carrying out, such as adding anti-aircraft shots. Now the reason for this is because you can actually control your mech yourself by using the right stick. This will control its gun turret, and whilst you have infinite ammo it is on a cooldown system, so every so often you'll have to stop shooting. And as you go further into the game you can actually unlock the ability to jump into the field itself and do more damage. I did find that after quite a simple start, in terms of the strategy needed, it does ramp up as you get a bit further in, and you do need to think about where you lay your traps, or the types of weapons that you use, in order to get the best results. You are awarded from 1 to 3 stars if you complete a mission, and this of course will affect how much of the currency you earn, but also in terms of side quests, can determine whether the next one is available or not. There is a bit of grinding involved in terms of having enough of the research points, say, to unlock certain weapons, and I did find myself replaying some earlier levels to increase my currency for such an occasion, but on the whole I must say I did enjoy the gameplay in this game. On a more negative note, there are just a few niggly issues, most of which relate to a general lack of polish. For example, the game doesn't actually tell you that you can upgrade individual units within battle, it's something that you'd expect to be able to do, but you can actually do it from the off by pressing ZR over a particular unit. This takes me into controls, another area of the game where there are just a lot of issues. Again, minor niggly ones for the main part, but they just detract from that overall feeling of a good polished game. Sometimes to move forward within menus you have to press A, other times you have to move the right stick over the button and press ZR, and other times you have to press B. It's just these sort of annoyances that do start to bring you down. There was also quite a bizarre incident where I started up the game having not played it for a day or two, with the first menu I was presented with at this point being my save data, slot 1, 2 or 3. I clicked on slot 1 to continue my game and actually saved over it and started a new game. Now it could well be this was my fault and it clearly said new game, I don't know, but it was just laid out so poorly that this was able to happen. Ideally there really does need to be a patch just to sort out the UI a bit, make it much more user friendly as it isn't as clear as it should be most of the time. Gameplay is a fun mix of tower defense and real time shooting and whilst there is some repetition here I did find generally each of the missions held my interest for a while and it gets 14 out of 20. 
Controls are fine once you get used to them, although there are just a few minor annoyances and one quite major one to be fair, that do hold it back and affect how the game feels in terms of its quality, they get 12 out of 20. If we look at the visuals now then, and as you can see it uses a pixel style, with a few different locations being used for each of the maps that you play on. The mechs have some variety to them, although for the most part it's not massively noticeable, especially not in the earlier mechs anyway. And the Kaiju, again, there is some variety moving forward, but you will see the same type of Kaiju quite a lot early on until you unlock those later missions. Looking at performance, early on in the game I didn't notice any major issues, although once I unlocked the survival mode and had a go at this, there were certainly frame drops. It did struggle with the number of creatures on screen, and this started to occur in the missions too, again, obviously once things got more hectic as I moved on. In terms of the audio, it does have that ominous feel to it that you would expect in a game like this, whilst having almost a techno beat to it at times too. I mentioned that lack of polish earlier, and this does also show itself in terms of the audio, whereby whilst you're waiting for the next level to load, sometimes the sound effects and voiceover will actually begin whilst the loading screen is still on. Again, it's just these small details that do show a general lack of care and attention, and in such a crowded area as the Nintendo eShop, these sort of things can be make or break to some people. Visuals do look bright and clean, and I do like the look of some of the Kaiju. A bit more variety earlier on would have been nice, and those frame stutters do affect the overall production values. They get 12 out of 20. Audio does exactly as you would expect it to do, but a few blemishes in terms of a lack of polish do affect things, and it gets 14 out of 20. Mex V Kaijus costs £11.69 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now unfortunately I didn't get to finish this one owing to inadvertently deleting my save data, whether that was my fault or poorly laid out menus is an argument for another day, but until that point I was flying through it actually, three stars all the way, and had spent a good few hours playing it. It had definitely kept my attention, but as far as I can see, you're looking at about 10 hours playtime in total. You have the main missions of course and those side missions that you can pursue, and you can obviously go back not only to free star all of them if you wish, but there's the mechs to unlock, the skill tree to max out, etc. So there is some extra value here. Not to hammer home the point, but again, it's just that lack of polish that really does harm the game in terms of its overall value. Not because it isn't a decent game to play, I did enjoy playing it. It just becomes all the more noticeable, especially when it has fierce competition on the eShop to contend with. With all this in mind, value gets 12 out of 20. To conclude, Mechs v Kaiju's is a fun game if you like tower defense games. It uses that source material well, I did like seeing the Kaiju's rampage through the city, knocking down buildings as you go, and whilst not as strategic possibly as some games in the genre, there was enough there to keep you invested. On the downside though, I do feel the controls are quite fiddly, the UI is certainly in need of sorting out, and there were those performance issues mentioned too. Not a bad game, but it definitely falls into the wait for a sale or patch category, and just be careful when attempting to continue your game. Mex V Kaiju's gets a switch up score of 64%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick this game up or any other game for that matter, you can get your eShop cards via our website switchup.gg, doing so will get you 5% of your purchase price back in cash back via our coins and you can also get another 5% off in straight discount if you use the code SWITCHUP. There's also a link down there to PlayAsia if you're looking to import any games, use the link, use the code STATED and you'll get yourself 5% off of your order from there. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.